Hello again, this is Mr. Sater at Dublin Soda High School. Today we'll be going over the uh, vertebral column for you. Uh, we're going to start by looking at what a typical vertebrae looks like and then we're going to go talk about the sections of the spine. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, this first section will be a review and then there'll be a quiz afterwards that you can test yourself on. So we'll start with the body. The body is sort of that um, the main part that makes up most of the bone we're going to find inside of a single uh, vertebrae. Um, between each body, there's going to be a disc that's sandwiched in between um, to give a little bit of cushioning and support. And sometimes people will have portions of these discs um, uh, push out into um, their body. And if it pushes on your nerves or spinal cord, it can cause all sorts of pain and problem for you. All right, the vertebral foramen is just the passageway your spinal cord goes into. Your spinal cord does branch off and head out between um, each uh, vertebrae to different areas of your body depending on where you're at. Your vertebral arch is that uh, line there with the arrowheads on it. It kind of makes up the posterior portion of that vertebral foramen and just gives a lot of structure to protect your spinal cord. Your spinous process, um, on a skinny person you can kind of see these poking out of their skin going down their spine. Um, this is also an attachment for um, muscle and ligament that's important to your back. Um, moving on, the lamina is sort of the, the, the bone structure of that posterior sign that wraps around to uh, form the vertebral arch on the uh, left and right side. The transverse process, this is important to ribs. The ribs will attach to that smooth surface there. If you look at it just right, it kind of looks like a thumbnail. That smooth area on the anterior side there is where um, you'll make a small joint with your ribs. So this is a thoracic vertebrae and that's one way you can kind of tell that it's a thoracic vertebrae. We'll talk about that here in a second. Your superior articular process is um, a projection that sticks up and there's a facet on it. Again, it's that smooth oval shaped area. And that makes a joint with the vertebrae above and uh, allows you some flexibility. Um, let's stop for just a second. These are facets for ribs that you'll find on the transverse process and on the body. And there's also one underneath. So each rib kind of connects in um, to these two spots here. And then it'll wrap around and, of course, eventually connect to your sternum. So if a vertebrae has facets on that posterior side of the body, that's a good way to tell that it's from the thoracic section of your spine. We'll talk more about how to tell those apart later. Uh, the pedicle is sort of that raised section that we find. Um, it, sort of make, it sort of makes up the sides of the vertebral foramen. It kind of, that, that actually wraps all the way around, and we call that section the pedicle. It's a little bit more anterior than the lamina. All right, let's look at the whole thing one last time. And it looks like we have eight terms here so those, that's not too bad. Alright, let's get into the types of vertebrae. At the top in that blue area is your neck. So that'll be your cervical vertebrae. If you remember we did surface anatomy, cervical meant neck and there are seven vertebrae there. Two of them are at the top are sort of special and they're called out in that diagram there. We'll talk about those here in a second. Um, the middle there, the the greenish area is your thoracic um, spine, and there are 12 bones throughout that section. Um, the last one, well not the last one, but the purplish one is the lumbar area, which we did in the uh, regions of your surface anatomy again, and there are only five bones in that section, but they are a lot bigger and thicker. Um, the last two sections are the sacral area, which is sort of one bone that's fused together, vertebrae, and then the coccyx, which is your tailbone. 
So just a couple things to pay attention to. There, the, there are different um, sections here. And so think of your neck, no ribs, and then your thoracic with ribs, and then your lumbar, no ribs again. And all you have to remember is that there are 7, 12, and 5. And an easy way to do that is think of the times you, you might eat meals. So you may eat differently, but this is just general times people eat. So maybe you have 7 o'clock breakfast, 12 o'clock lunch, and a 5 o'clock dinner. If you can kind of commit that to memory, that will help you uh, get through the spine as you move from top to bottom. Each individual bone we kind of give shorthand names to. So if it's your first cervical vertebrae, you might call that one C1. Or if it's the first thoracic vertebrae, so that'd be the first one with a rib attached to it, that might be T1. And you can just move down through. So you may hear people on medical TV shows talking about someone having maybe a fracture of the C5 vertebrae or, or something similar. So just pay attention to that and see if you notice it. And you can tell where you are in the back by using that C, T, L, and then the number you're in. So just some medical shorthand for you, anatomy shorthand as well. The first two cervical vertebrae are kind of unique and they have um, unique names other than C1 and C2. It's still okay to call them that and most people probably do, but we're going to call the top one your atlas. From mythology you might remember um, Hercules had to uh, do all the different labors and he tricked Atlas into doing one of them for him. And Atlas is the guy who kind of holds up the globe. And so uh, if you think of your head as a globe and this bone holding up your globe, that kind of makes sense. The second one is called the axis and it has a little bone that projects out of it. I'll show you a, a model of this one in class so you can understand a little bit better. But the dens there, if you look at that bottom diagram right in the center, the dens points up out of the uh, um, axis. And if you think of axis, something spinning on its axis, this allows your head to have the motion of like a side to side shaking your head no. And so these are a little bit unique and um, we stop and talk about them for that reason. Um, Supposedly, there's a fracture of the dens that happens quite often in people who are um, hung for execution or something like that. And you can imagine, here's what happens. This dens, if the hanging is done in a certain way, will crack off and, and poke into your spinal cord. And so just remember, the, the anterior side of, of these bones is facing the bottom of the screen, and the posterior side is in the front. So your dens is in the front and the hangman's fracture when that breaks off and enters your spinal cord. All right, looking at just a general cervical vertebrae, there's a couple things about them that kind of allows you to identify them. Um, they usually have an opening on the left and right side that a large blood vessel travels through, and that right there is usually enough to say, oh, that's a cervical vertebrae. So if you look at that, uh, diagram right there and you see those openings on the left and right side that'll tell you there they also have a spinous process that's often but not always um, forked and you can kind of see it almost looks like a, a snake tongue coming off the spinous process there and that'll kind of give it away that that is a cervical vertebrae sometimes all right a thoracic vertebrae you can tell it's thoracic because they're getting bigger you don't see the opening on the side of the transverse process, but what you do see, I already talked about this a little bit, are those um, costal facets for ribs. So look on the transverse process and on the body, and you'll see a smooth spot for ribs to form a joint. Now, every vertebrae has the facets that are on the um, um, articular process. It's not that facet, it's the ones on the body and the transverse process. Just take a minute to look, look for those and make sure you understand what I'm talking about. The diagram literally says facet for rib. Okay, moving on. Your lumbar vertebrae are much bigger when it comes to the body. So if you look at the size of the body compared to the size of the vertebral foramen, the body's getting significantly bigger because your spine has a lot more weight to, to 
support as you move down. And um, there are no facets for the uh, ribs here. Um, no openings on the side for any blood vessels like in the cervical area. And what we're going to see here is the transverse process kind of, instead of being swept toward the uh, posterior, it's almost uh, perpendicular to um, the body. So lumbar vertebrae. Um, just going to mention real briefly your sacrum and coccyx. Uh, the word sacrum um, comes from a word that's similar to sacred, and people once thought your soul was related to this bone in some way, and uh, that's where it got its name. The coccyx is down there at the bottom. That's your tailbone. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the quiz like I've done in the past, so I'll show you a picture. Um, try to name the structure the arrow is pointing to. I'll pause briefly for you to pause if you need more time to think, and then I'll show the answer on the next slide. So what is the name of this section of a vertebrae? That's the body. We're looking for the body there. And next, what is the name of that opening for your spinal cord? That's the vertebral foramen. projection off the back of your spine is called the, that's the spinous process. This makes up the structure that's um, the back part of the vertebral foramen. That is the vertebral arch. As part of that, we have these sections that are a little bit more specific to the area. Those are the lamina. These projections kind of sweep a little bit more laterally. Those are the transverse process. All right, this structure makes up the more the lateral portion of the um, vertebral foramen. That's the pedicle. All right, this is really two things at once here, but uh, this makes a joint with the vertebrae above. This is a superior articular process, and that smooth area on it is the facet. Next, we're just going to go through the names of the sections of the spine. This top section for your neck is called the... And how many bones does it have, if you can name that, too? It's a cervical area, C1 through 7. All right, this area of your spine... It's a thoracic area, and that'd be T1 through 12. That's the area you're going to find ribs. And below that, this is the lumbar area, L1 through L5, so five bones in that area. And just remember again, times of day you eat, 7 o'clock breakfast for cervical, 12 noon for lunch, that'll be thoracic and five o'clock dinner, that'll be lumbar. So that'll help you out. All right, below lumbar, we have what region? Or bone? as a sacral area. And finally, all the way at the bottom, a couple of small bones. That is your coccyx. So I hope you got um, a little bit about the vertebral column out of this and the different parts of a individual vertebrae. Also how to tell the difference between different bones of your vertebral column. Let me know how this video worked out for you. If you have any problems with it, I'd love to hear about them or if any other comments, just let me know in class. Have a great day.